I'm going to talk about how loyalty schemes can be um, reshaped for a mobile world. Just a quick thing about us, Sponge is the largest mobile agency in the UK. I'm also chairman of the Mobile Marketing Association. And we fundamentally believe that the mobile phone and the mobile number is at the heart of anything and any form of loyalty campaign moving forward. And these are the sort of people we work with to increasingly develop this sort of thing. But I just want to sort of concentrate both on, on the positives and negatives of, of mobile first. Um, everyone's telling you how amazing mobile is, and in a lot of ways it is. Um, so I'll start off with some of the good bits. A quote from the CEO of Microsoft. Time taken between doing some research on the web and then making a purchase is typically a month. On the mobile phone, it's an hour. It's the immediacy. It's the proximity. So that's great. Similarly, um, sorry, I don't know why Google's down there, actually. Um, these days, um, smartphone penetration is near as damn it 100%. And the reason I say that, something like 60% of all phones sold now are smartphones. But the difference between what used to be called a, a feature phone and a smartphone is so bizarre that anything which is on sale in a shop these days will allow you internet access, will have a colour screen, and will deliver rich content. Um, last year in the UK, 15% of online, all online sales were via a mobile device. This year, it's expected to be over 20%. Certainly, the, the M-commerce sites we do with clients, they're seeing 20 to 25%. But even more interestingly, tablets are rapidly overtaking mobile devices in terms of actual sales. However, uh, according to Pew in the States, 34% of smartphone users cancelled their purchase in store. Now, what that means is, in the good old days, you walked into a store, that store owned you. They could control that relationship with you. These days, it doesn't work like that, because suddenly, you've got access to review sites, you've got access to all this other information. So as a result, there is every chance that you will, your loyalty towards the retailer is not what it used to be. Furthermore, according to Google, 70% um, of the companies who advertise on, on Google in the UK don't even have a mobile site or a mobile presence. That's just shocking. That's like closing your website down a couple of days a week, and there's no excuse for that. If you don't do it, come and see me afterwards. You're going to get a slapping. Um, even worse... Loyalty works in a different way to the way it used to. So in the good old days, people accepted the fact that if you didn't have a mobile presence, it was fine. They would still try and transact with you another way. But this research from Lightspeed shows that in total, 38% of people would abandon you as a retailer and go somewhere else rather than trying to complete a transaction with you via a mobile site. And then good old Deloitte say four out of ten shops will shut in the next five years because they didn't um, embrace online properly. Now, we actually think that's a huge opportunity for the six in ten shops which remain because they will be the ones who are embracing a proper cross-channel uh, strategy. So the conundrum is mobile is the ultimate personal device. It drives loyalty better than any other channel. Yay! but it also drives disloyalty better than any other channel as well. And we see there um, being a very big shift when it comes to loyalty because we're moving from a period of entitlement to a, a period of empowerment. A mobile device in particular will allow brands to, to deliver to consumers the types of experiences that other devices and channels can't. The loyalty schemes work. Virtually everyone belongs to one. Two-thirds of us belong to three or more. And it's the fifth highest impact factor uh, when it comes to grocery shoppers. Number one, surprisingly enough, being price. But increasingly, the mobile engenders different behaviours. Customers now have a level of expectation from their mobile devices. Peter just showed a mobile in increasingly is able to anticipate your behaviour. I would encourage you to upgrade to Jelly Bean because I have exactly the same capability. And it's just quite freaky the way it suddenly learns something new about you. Um, but also, the mobile device, because of its wonderful one-on-one -on -one nature, allows a level of communication which really moves away from mass media. I think the perfect example of where 
the mobile environment is so far removed from the traditional thinking of too many retailers is if you take the Mary Mika stats which are produced each year. So the last stats from Mary Mika said that 7% of consumers' time is spent consuming traditional print media, newspapers, magazines, etc. 7%. And yet 25% of budgets are still spent on print media. If you go to the opposite extreme, and surprise, surprise, I've got a vested interest, but 10% of consumers' time is now consuming stuff on a mobile device. This is not making calls or texting, it's consuming content. And yet less than half a percent of budgets are spent on the mobile device. So in terms of des uh, designing loyalty 2.0, it's about the types of behaviours we incentivise, the contact strategies we use, and the types of rewards we offer. And really, first of all, we, we need to think about what behaviours we're trying to incentivise. And it's, it's about attracting those scarce resources. And to our mind, there are four. One is money. Money is tight. So it's all about ensuring that your customers spend more of their money with you than elsewhere. And that's where things like dynamic pricing kicks in. It's all about attention. We've heard various times this afternoon, people can't cope with the deluge of stuff they get from different sources. So again, if you get the loyalty scheme right, you have a much higher chance of attracting and winning and maintaining the attention of the customer. Data. Well, um, increasingly, and in fact, as our new paper, which I'll, I'm happy to share with you afterwards, talks about data, and mobile data in particular, is particularly powerful. Once you know who your customer is, you can track them very easily using mobile. And finally, location, one of the biggest USPs of mobile. It knows, your mobile knows where you are and can therefore de deliver to you context and location relevant stuff. What that then means is it enables a loyalty scheme to empower the individual. It's much, individuals these days are much more selfish. They want things which are relevant for them, which are personal to them, which are appropriate to them. And therefore, it's about giving me points, but points which have more value than some of, some of the sort of old-fashioned schemes. But more importantly, it's recognising me. It's the individual in individuality of it. It's where things like the Tesco's club card has been very good in the past. It knows what my shopping habits are, therefore it is likely to send me offers which are relevant to me, which I can use. It should inform me as well, and, and finally, and most importantly, actually, it should entertain me. And again, it's, it's moving from this idea of giving people something slightly unexpected. It's the surprise and delight so if I have a coffee loyalty card, after 10 coffees, I get a free coffee. Big deal. It doesn't really change anything. As far as I'm concerned, it's my entitlement. I know once I've had those 10 coffees, I'll get a free one. But, as happened to me the other day, I went into a pret, which I use reasonably regularly, and the bloke said, hi there, do you want a coffee? So I said, yes, I usually do. And they gave it to me for free. Now, that was the same as a loyalty scheme, but it was totally unexpected to me and it created talkability. I mean, here I am today telling you about it. Because they surprised me. They did something which I wasn't expecting. And I'm more likely to talk about it as a result. So traditional loyalty schemes, which always deliver exactly what you're looking for, are great in their own right. But increasingly, as we move towards loyalty 2.0, you have to go the extra mile and find ways of hooking in the customer and delivering them something they weren't expecting. We're a mobile agency, so funnily enough, we, we actually believe that you should think mobile first. And mobile lends itself particularly well to loyalty schemes. I'm sure virtually everyone here has multiple email addresses. I'm sure in the last five years, a lot of you have moved house. It's highly unlikely anyone in this room has changed their mobile number in, in that time. So it's the one constant about you which doesn't change. What that allows us to do then is increasingly personalise uh, what we're delivering to people, because mobile does allow a genuine one-to-one -one and unique uh, set of contact data and, and information to be shared. It allows things to be um, member-led. So you can offer a much broader range of stuff where permission, as is always the case, has to be given by the customer first of all. It can be contextual. It's time and place. 
And it's all about the spontaneity. You've got your mobile phone with you when you're out and about. You can respond there and then. Um, good news is there's only one more slide after this. How we help, we turn shoppers into bars and bars into profitable, loyal customers. And, you know, I'll go through that another time if anyone's interested. Um, but probably of relevance to some of the people here at least, We've just published our second white paper, which is Reshaping Loyalty Schemes from Mobile First World. Very happy to share that with you. It's got a lot more information in it. And um, happy, happy to have a chat otherwise.